Humans are social creatures. We couldn't have hunted alone, raised children alone, or survived the brutal conditions of the Stone Age in isolation. Yet long before spoken words were born, our ancestors still had to share information, warn each other of danger, express emotions, and coordinate essential survival actions that raises a fundamental but also incredibly challenging question. Before we could speak, how did we understand each other? Anthropologists call this the pre-linguistic phase of communication, a period when the Homo sapiens brain had become sophisticated enough for group coordination, but full-fledged language had not yet emerged. There were no sentences, no vocabulary, no grammar, not even a stable way of forming sounds, and yet somehow people knew when to run, when to stay quiet, and when to divide up the catch after a successful hunt. They didn't need words, but they could still communicate. And within that dark, undocumented chapter of human history, a hidden system of communication emerged, not based on script, not even on organized speech, but on glances, gestures, breath, and the shared rhythm of collective life. It was a kind of invisible language unseen, but always present, that helped our ancestors become something truly different from every other species. Before any meaningful sound ever came out of a human mouth, the body was the first language. Hands, eyes, posture, stance. These were not just physical movements, but tools of silent expression in the prehistoric world. A raised palm might signal stop. A pointed finger could warn of a threat near the bushes. A lowered head or a subtle lean might signal submission within the group. No words were needed. These gestures alone were powerful enough to shape behavior across the tribe. Remarkably, the Homo sapiens brain had already evolved to instinctively read and react to these physical cues. The visual and emotional centers of the brain, especially the occipital lobe and the amygdala, responded rapidly to the body language of others, particularly when danger or conflict was involved. Even today, when you see someone clenching their fists, raising an eyebrow, or giving you a piercing stare, you instantly sense something's wrong without a single word being spoken. This mechanism predates language, and in many cases it's even more effective than words in moments of survival. Another compelling clue comes from newborns. In their first few months of life, before they understand any words, babies already know how to point shake their heads, reach out to be held, and interpret facial expressions. This proves that body-based communication is hardwired. It doesn't require learning language to exist. Comparative studies with our closest relatives, chimpanzees and bonobos, show that gestures, eye movements and postures are also common in primate groups. But Homo sapiens went much further. We combined gestures with gaze direction, body spacing, even breath rhythm, forming a rich, multi-layered system of expression. Our bodies didn't just move, they spoke. And for hundreds of thousands of years before spoken language took hold, the human body was the most universal language on Earth. Even before language existed, humans were making sounds, not structured speech, but raw emotional sounds that came straight from the body, the nervous system and instinct. A sharp scream could alert the entire group to an approaching predator. A low growl might warn an intruder. A whimper could signal pain, and even the sound of shallow breathing might trigger fear in those nearby. These sounds required no learning. They were part of the evolutionary toolkit shared by many social mammals, but in humans they evolved to become richer, more expressive, and socially meaningful. Researchers call this form of expression emotional vocalization, the use of sound to convey internal emotional states without using words. Biologically, these sounds are processed lightning fast by the limbic system, our brain's emotional center bypassing the need for language interpretation. In other words, you hear a scream and instinctively understand it without translating it into any sentence. One key element here is tone, not what is said, but how it's said high or low, fast or slow, sharp or trembling. Tone of voice allows us to detect emotions and intentions long before we process any words. This is especially clear in how we talk to babies. They may not understand a single word, but they instantly recognize emotional tones, laughing, crying, cooing in response. This reflects the exact way our ancestors communicated not with defined meanings, but with emotional melodies. Some linguists like Stephen Mithen have even proposed the theory of Musilanguage, suggesting that early Homo sapiens didn't speak at all, 
but rather sang their feelings using melodic vocalizations that combined music and social cues. Whether or not you agree with that idea, one thing is clear, emotional sound was the foundation upon which spoken language would later be built. It allowed humans to bond, coordinate and react together, creating a shared rhythm of behavior that was vital in a dangerous, unpredictable world. And before our ancestors could say help me, they were already screaming for rescue and those primal cries repeated over generations became the stepping stones to humanity's first spoken words. If emotional sounds were reactive, the next evolutionary leap was intentional communication using sound and movement with clear purpose. Picture a group of homo sapiens moving through a forest. One taps three times on a tree, everyone stops. Another pats a teammate's shoulder and tilts their head immediately. The group fans out into a hunting formation. These weren't random noises anymore. They were deliberate signals, structured symbolic actions, even though no words yet existed. The key here is rhythm. Humans quickly learned that repeated sound patterns could coordinate group behavior. A steady beat of hand claps or drum-like strikes could synchronize paddling or lifting heavy objects. A series of knocks might mean gather here. A short whistle might mean go. Neurologically, the human brain is highly attuned to repetitive sound patterns. The auditory cortex and motor cortex are strongly linked, meaning we don't just hear rhythm, we feel it in our muscles. That's why rhythmic cues trigger synchronized actions even in complete silence. But early humans didn't stop at sound. They developed chains of physical gestures, a head shake, a raised arm, a chest tap. This could mean ready for battle. These gesture sequences were remembered and repeated forming a rudimentary sign language system long before any spoken grammar existed. Many anthropologists believe that this combination of rhythmic sound and purposeful movement laid the groundwork for symbolic language. This was a turning point communication was no longer just about emotion, but about strategy, coordination and shared understanding. By this stage, Homo sapiens were no longer just reacting to the world, they were shaping it, directing one another's actions, using shared repeated signals. A hand clap, a knock on stone, simple yes. But these were the earliest blueprints of meaning, and though spoken language had not yet arrived, its structure had already begun to form. Before there were words, Homo sapiens could already cooperate, love warn, and even forgive. None of those things could happen without communication, and no, they didn't need spoken language to make it happen. From simple hand gestures, to emotional sounds, to rhythmic signals and coordinated movements, our ancestors built a complex social signaling system long before anything like modern language existed. Understanding one another wasn't a learned skill, it was instinct. Creating connection wasn't a luxury, it was a necessity for survival and communication in any form became the first social glue that bound early humans into something more than just a group of individuals. Modern science suggests that it was precisely this pressure to collaborate to share hunting strategies, raise children, defend territory that drove our brains to evolve the ability to interpret and generate complex signals. Without communication, there could be no cooperation. Without cooperation, no culture. And without culture, our species wouldn't have made it. Spoken language with its sounds, words and grammar had not yet appeared, but the foundation was already there. And the most astonishing part, we still carry that legacy today. You still understand people through a look. You still feel tension in a silent room. You can still be hurt by someone who never says a word. That's the residue of the pre-linguistic world when language didn't exist, but the human heart still found ways to reach out and be heard.